Well, it looks like a Game Boy Advance SP, but does it perform like one? Let's take a look. It should do. It's 64-bit game. So hello and welcome back to Retro Core and today we're taking a look at the 64-bit game from Pow Kitty. Yes, this comes in a little tiny box as you can see by the size of it to my hand and I have small hands. On the side of the box we've got the usual diagram of the machine telling you what you can do with it. We've got a headphone socket, that's cool. And according to this side of the box it's a 64-bit operating system, supports arcade, Game Boy Advance, Famicom, Super Famicom, Sega Mega Drive games. Uh, it supports more than that and also supports multilingual language. Nice. Yeah. Apparently it comes in three different colours, black, yellow and red. We have the red one, but when you see the machine, I'm sure you'll agree that it's actually orange. And talking of the machine, here it is. Oh yeah. So it does kind of look like a Game Boy SP, or a Game Boy Advance SP I should say. But unlike that, it doesn't have any preset angles. You can kind of just stop it wherever you want, see? So it feels a little bit cheap to be honest with you. But, yeah, I mean, it's doable. This side we've got a volume control. This side we've got the micro SD card and power switch. USB-C input there to charge it. And also transfer data to the SD card if you wish. A headphone socket there. And we've got the D-pad, which is pretty good. And a couple of face buttons, which are all hard buttons. On the back we have the battery cover, which is a lithium ion rechargeable battery. As you can see, typical style there. And we also have a couple of shoulder buttons as well. Okay, so upon switching on the machine, you can see straight away that this is another Dingo operating system. Now, we've got to keep our expectations very low with this because this is a cheap machine. Prices, right there. Yeah, as of making this video, this is very cheap. So yeah, do keep your expectations pretty low. So first up, we can see what type of emulators we have on here. Just a usual bunch really. We've got the Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Famicom, Super Famicom, Game Gear, Master System, Mega Drive, PlayStation, Neo Geo Pocket, Color, and Black and White. One this one, Color and Black and White, PC Engine, and a lot of arcade stuff as well. Plus we also get the usual bunch of accessories and built-in Linux ports, such as Quake, uh, Streets of Age Remake, and some King of Fighters Remake as well. All right, so, Let's take a look at the emulation of the system, but before we do that, let's take a look and see what we get in the box. So we get the little bit of a rubber bagging that the machine was wrapped up in, and upon taking out the bottom of the box, we have a USB-C cable, and that's your lot. We just got a video game consoles manual flip series, oh yeah. And one side is in Chinese, as to be expected, while the other side is in English. Alright. And according to the instructions, this does not come with any games built in. Okay. So let's get a little bit closer to the machine and see the emulation in action. Okay, so first up, let's try some Game Boy games. Now this game machine comes with over 2,000 games built in, spread across the different systems. Game Boy has 221 games. Let's start off with one of my favourites, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now I did keep a save state for this one as well, so we can see if that's saved. Here we go, Turtles, Fall of the Foot Clan, that's the one. At the bottom of the machine we also have two stereo speakers, which sound reasonable considering their size. Okay, and there we go. Now we are rocking an IPS screen, so it is nice and clear. What refresh rate it is, I don't know, but I'm wondering if it is actually 60 frames per second. Okay, so pressing select and 
oh no, pressing this button up here, I should say, we go to the menu system and I should be able to load my save state that I did the other day. There we go. <laughs> so the save state has worked. And my buttons have been mixed up again. <laughs> so I didn't have them uh, change when I saved the last time. But yeah, Game Boy emulation is really good. Not a problem there at all. Oh yeah, a bit of Duke Nukem on the Game Boy Color. Here we go. And as to be expected, it works perfectly fine. It's a little bit of screen tearing, mind you, which I did notice in the normal Game Boy emulation, but it seems to be here in the Game Boy Color emulation. But it is running at 60 frames per second. Okay, now since this machine does look like a Game Boy Advance SP, surely it must be able to run Game Boy Advance games, right? Well, let's find out. Let's push it with something a little bit on the uh, difficult side. Let's try a bit of Doom 2. So far, so good. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Ooh, just listen to that audio. And the controls are as laggy as hell. Oh yeah, I was speeding up a bit there. Well, oh, maybe it won't be too bad. Nope, spoke too soon. <laughs> oh, the controls are lagging like crazy. Okay, this thing is not going to run powerful GBA games, is it? Let's try a game which may not be as demanding. Well, as you can see, this one seems to be moving at a smooth pace, but I can see a bit of screen tearing in there. You may also notice that it is producing the correct aspect ratio for Game Boy Advance games. Now you can go into the options and fill up the entire screen, but I just keep it on correct aspect ratio. I think it looks better. Okay, let's try another Game Boy Advance game. And yeah, straight away, you can see the screen stuttering. Can you see it down here? Yeah, it's got some uh, uh, screen tearing going on. But it is running at the correct speed. So I have a feeling that the screen is not uh, a 60 hertz screen. Alright, moving on, let's try Famicom or Nintendo. And now I wonder how many games they give us for this. Probably around about 200 or more. 713, that's a lot. So we'll start off with the last one, YY World. Now this is kind of like a European developed game in a way because you're way too far to the right hand of the screen to make it scroll. It's annoying. Maybe Konami got one of their uh, European partners to develop this one. Who knows? But as you can see, Famicom or NES games work perfectly fine. No problem. I have tried quite a few games and they all worked. I didn't have any problems with any of them.
Okay, next Super Famicom. You know this isn't going to work because on a cheap machine, Super Famicom never seems to work well. And this is a cheap machine. But we'll give it a try with pushing it a little bit by playing Pile of Wings. So we'll go with the aeroplane first. Yeah, you can see that jerking around there. Yeah. Pile of Wings does not jerk around. It is very smooth. But to be honest, I'm surprised it's running a DSP game. Let's see if we can land the plane. Jeez, the controls are laggy as hell. Come on, speed up, speed up. Alright, let's get this. Ah! Yeah, <laughs> it is so difficult to do because the controls are so laggy. <laughs> All right, let's try a normal game. See if we can get a normal game to play on it. Uh, let's see. Well, as you can see, this one is moving smoothly. But that is no guarantee when it comes to Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo is usually very hit and miss on these type of devices. So let's try another game, just to be safe. I'm stuck. Yeah, there is some frame skip in there, you can see it. Yeah, you can see the frame skipping. Oh! Ooh, look at that juddering along. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that Super Nintendo emulation is not good on this machine. Look at that! Oh, that's awful. Get that off. Okay, so so far Game Boy and Game Boy Color are fine, Game Boy Advance is hit and miss, Famicom is fine, Super Famicom is bad. Let's try Mega Drive. Bet your Mega Drive is perfectly fine, usually always is. I've got the frame counter on this one so we can see how many frames it's running at. And as you can see, it's pretty much 60 frames per second down there. That sounds good. Here we go. See if we can get any screen tearing going on. Oops. Nope, no screen tearing. Lots of dying though. Here it seems the Mega Drive emulation is pretty good. Not too bad. Let's try another Mega Drive game, just to be sure. Aero Blaster is one of the first games on the Mega Drive to use um, a loading screen, actually. As you can see, it's decrunching the graphics now, so we have to wait and watch this lovely little picture. So I can tell you the sound is perfect. It's in stereo. Sounds good. And the frames per second are holding up there. Yep, lovely and smooth. It's 
So yeah, I would say the Mega Drive emulation is a winner. Seems to be working very well. Yep, not a problem, as to be expected. Okay, quick look at Sega Master System. Go to Classic Rambo 3. I just realized I can't play this, can I? Because I haven't got a gun. <laughs> But yeah, as you can see, it's scrolling smoothly. No problems there. Alright, next system. PlayStation. I bet you're all wondering how well PlayStation works. Well, considering it doesn't run Super Nintendo very good, don't expect it to run PlayStation very good. Okay, so we just booted up a game called Night Terror, wherever that is. It's from Johnsoft. Oh, I think it's going to be a visual novel. Yes, it's a visual novel. Alright, well that's completely useless for us to play, isn't it? So let's change that game. Dino Crisis. Diablo City X. Oh, that would be Castlevania. Uh, Symphony of the Night. Uh, take Risks. What on earth is that? Squaresoft. Okay. Ah, Vagrant Story. So basically the names of these games is translated directly from the Chinese, not the Japanese. So they've all got weird titles. Is that a door? Can't see. I mean, it seems to be running this reasonably well, I guess. Not perfect, but reasonably. Okay, let's try one more PlayStation game. I must say it's got quite a few PlayStation games on here. Uh, 20. Okay, Iron 3. That's going to be Tekken 3, isn't it? Now, Tekken 3 is a PlayStation game that really pushed the PlayStation. So, let's see just how well it works on this machine. I'm guessing probably not very well at all. It's taking a while to boot up, isn't it? There we go. Yeah. Yeah, not very good, is it? But, as I said at the beginning of this video, you have to keep your expectations low because this is a cheap machine. So you couldn't expect it to run PlayStation games anyway. Okay, let's take a look at a few more machines emulated and we'll call it a day. Um, I can tell you now, Neo Geo Pocket runs like a dog, runs really bad, and so does Wonder Swan. They both run at around about 20 frames per second, so it's not even worth taking a look at them. Awful. All right, let's take a look at PC Engine and we'll go with the classic Splatterhouse 2. If I can find it on here. <laughs> look at that. Space Harrier. Is now called Space Harry. Classic. Uh, where's Splatterhouse 2? Uh, well, it is on here somewhere, but whereabouts, who knows? Because they're all named under their Chinese translations, not the actual game titles, which is a pain in the backside. Tell you what, we'll do PC Engine Street Fighter 2. And I've got the frame counter on up here in the corner. And as you can see, it's doing pretty well, sticking to 60 frames per second. I can tell that all PC Engine games work perfectly fine on this, not a problem. Oh, I should also point out 
that um, Mega CD and PC Engine CD games also work on this device. But you have to put the biases onto the machines. That's my kicks. Ah, uh, I've got the controls configured. There we go. Uh, killed by Zangief. Alright, but I can honestly say all PC Engine games work perfectly fine. Not a problem. Okay, and finally on to the arcade stuff. Now it says arcade, CPS, Neo Geo and MAME, but just ignore that because they're all mixed up with each other. So as you can see here, this is a CPS 2 game I believe. And it is working just fine. Some more CPS2 action here. This is Darkstalkers. And yet, yeah, as you can see, not a problem. CPS2 stuff works really well on this device. So even as a portable CPS2 game player, it's worth the money. Although I'm having trouble playing the games it's because I'm stuck behind a viewfinder. Okay, so let's check out a Neo Geo game. We're going to go with one of my favorites. This is Art of Fighting 2, one of the classics on the Neo Geo. And that didn't sound quite right, did it? Now we got to go to that stage, of course, just for the music. Where's my buttons? There we go. Yeah, this game is relentless. Come on, let me figure out where my buttons are. Nope. There we go. Well, apart from me getting my ass kicked, it seems to be working just fine. Let's try out one more Neo Geo game. Well, you can't try Neo Geo without trying a bit of Mel Slug, can you? Be reasonably well. Playing please reasonably well, I should say. But I just did notice a bit of a pause there. Did you see that? Let's play a little bit more, see if that happens again. No, it doesn't seem to be happening again. I just being a freak coincidence. Okay, so all the arcade stuff we just saw was running on Final Burn Alpha. This is actually running on MAME. So let's see how well MAME works on this device. Of course, it's not going to play all the latest games, but it should play something pretty old like this. This is Ghouls and Ghosts. A little bit skippy on the sound there, but not too bad. Yeah, controls are nice. Oh, 
audio could be better. But overall, not too bad. I think Final Burn Alpha is definitely the way to go on this device if you want to put arcade stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that sounded pretty bad. So there we have it. The 64-bit handheld games machine from Pal Kitty. Looks like a Game Boy Advance SP. And it plays Mega CD games. Cool. So yeah, um, it's not the best machine in the world, but it is priced accordingly. So Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Mega Drive, PC Engine, uh, a lot of the older arcade stuff. Let's just turn that down a little bit. Um, Mega CD, PC Engine CD, um, they all work perfectly fine. Things like PlayStation, yeah, hit and miss, Super Nintendo, Super Famicom, hit and miss, uh, Neo Geo Pocket Color, uh, Wonder Swan, uh, Game Boy Advance, which is ironic because that's what it looks like. Um, they're all hit and miss as well, or terrible depending. But yeah, um, most other stuff seems to be working just fine. And for a device that's as cheap as this, what else could you ask for? It's a nice little stocking filler. That's it. It's not meant to be a hardcore gamer's machine. So there's a link in the video description down below. Maybe you want to pick one of these up for yourself or maybe for the kids for Christmas. Who knows? Anyway, link in the video description and I'll just quickly say everything that this game machine came with was built in. That doesn't make sense, does it? Everything that I showed you was built into this machine. So. I guess it depends where you buy it from, but I bought mine from Tom, Tom Top uh, in, in the video link. And yeah, it came with all the games pre-built into it, so um, your mileage may vary. It just depends where you buy it from, I guess. Anyway, there you go. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you again in the next video. Till then, guys, take it easy and keep on gaming. See ya.